Hi, I'm Rev. Jake Zabe, and welcome to Children's Bible Stories. Hello children and welcome back to Children's Bible Stories. Today we're going to be doing the story of the Ten Commandments. So, Moses had gone up onto Mount Sinai for 40 days to talk with God. And while he was up there, God gave him these two big stone tablets. And on those tablets, he wrote Ten Commandments. Now, if we look at the actual text, there's about 12 different commands given by God there. But the Bible tells us that there were only ten commandments. So some of these have to get combined together. And now the Lutherans and the Reformed groups like the Baptists and the Catholics and the Orthodox, they do have different numberings of the ten commandments. But as we're Lutherans on this channel, we're going to be going through the version of the ten commandments as held in the Western Church. So very similar to the Roman Catholics, the Lutherans and the Catholics are only slightly different when we get to the ninth and 10th commandment. But for this video, we'll be doing the Lutheran version of the Ten Commandments. And so Moses had gone up on the mountain and God had given him the Ten Commandments. Now, we're not going to be doing the story today of the golden calf incident when Moses came down from the mountain. That's a story for another day. Today, we're just going to be focusing on the Ten Commandments themselves. So Moses had to read the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel. And join with me today for this video is my little acolyte, Heinrich. Heinrich, would you like to wave your hand on screen, please? Now, Heinrich's going to be helping us by telling us what the Ten Commandments are. And then I'm going to be helping explain to you children what each of those commandments mean. So Heinrich, what is the first commandment? You shall have no eyes adored. That's right. And that one's pretty self-explanatory. We just, we only have one God. We're only to worship one God and no others. But Luther tells us in his catechism, what is a God? And he said, a God is anything you put your trust in, in times of trouble and things you look to for all good and it's that thing that you worship. So a God doesn't necessarily have to be like another false God, like a pagan God or a Muslim God or a Buddhist God. A God could even be things like television or video games or chocolate or any of those things that... If you get really scared and upset, if you run to that thing rather than praying to God, then you're making that thing your God. So to have no other gods means to always put God first. You should always, we should always thank God for everything good you have. And when you get scared or upset, the first thing you should do is pray to God for help rather than running to something else. Now you can go to other things for help. Like if you're in trouble, you can you can get your mummy and your daddy. And if you're upset, sure, maybe playing a game or something can help you calm down. But the first thing you should do is always pray to God first and then go to the other thing. That's why Jesus says to seek first the kingdom of God and then all those other things will be given to you. So you go to God first and then to everything else. Now, Heinek, what's the second commandment? You shall not. Now this is to do with not saying naughty words. You don't swear and you don't say God's name uselessly. You should only ever pray to God and use God's name in prayer or in preaching if you need to teach other people about Jesus. That's how we use God's name correctly. If you use God's name in any other way, that's breaking the second commandment. Now Heinek, do you know what the third commandment is? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Yes, so the third commandment is about remembering the Sabbath day. Now for the Jews, that meant they had to also stop all work on Saturday, the seventh day of the week, which was the Sabbath day. Now we Christians worship on Sunday, but that's not because we're worshipping on the Sabbath. Luther taught that the third commandment is about us setting aside time to worship God. 
This means setting aside some time daily to worship God, maybe during daily devotion at, at breakfast or dinner or lunch, and also setting aside time every week to go and listen to God's Word. And that's why we go to church every Sunday. So the third commandment is about spending time with God, spending some time to read the Bible, spending some time to pray to God, thank God, ask God for things. Whoops. And that's what the third commandment is about. Now, Heinrich, do you know what the fourth commandment is? I am your father and your mother. That's right. So that's listening and obeying your mother and your father. But as Luther taught us in the Catechism, every other authority that we have in the world, the government or bosses at work or your teachers at school, they all stem from the office of parent. And so honouring your father and your mother is not just respecting your mummy and your daddy, but also respecting all forms of authority, like your teacher, or if you have a job, your boss, or the government, or the police, or anybody who's in a position of authority. It also said in the New Testament, St. Paul teaches us, mummy and their daddy are also to look after their children, to care for them, and to protect them. So in addition to this commandment telling children to listen to their parents and to obey what their parents tell them to do, it's also a command to their mummy and their daddy to look after their children and to love them and to care for them. And now we move on to the fifth commandment, Heinrich, which is... You shall not kill. That's right, you shouldn't kill anyone. Now... Jesus tells us in the New Testament, in his famous Sermon on the Mount, that this commandment isn't limited to just not killing, but to all forms of hurting people. So you don't punch people, you don't kick people, and you don't tease people or call them naughty names or swear at them, because Jesus said that that's also murder. That's what Jesus says. He goes, if you haven't killed your brother, but you still call him an idiot, or you hate your brother, then that's just as much as killing him. Now the sixth commandment, Heinrich, is... You shall not commit adultery. Now you kids are young, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on what adultery is, but adultery is that when a mummy and a daddy are married, they should only be with mummy and daddy. That Daddy shouldn't go having any other wives or any girlfriends, and mummy shouldn't go having any other husbands or boyfriends. And that's essentially, kids, what the um, commandment about adultery is. Honey, what's the seventh commandment? You shall not steal. And that means not taking stuff that isn't yours. So don't steal toys from other kids. Don't go sneaking bickers or chocolates out of the fridge. Don't go sneaking lollies out the fridge. If you take anything that isn't yours, that's stealing. And Heinrich, what's the eighth commandment? You shall not bear fault witness against your neighbour. Yes, and so what's false witness, Heinrich? Do you know what false witness is? Dying. Yeah, it's when you tell lies, but it's not just telling lies. So. Telling lies is covered by the Eighth Commandment, but Luther also says in the Catechism that the Eighth Commandment deals with a person's reputation. And so reputation is their good name, that people think good things about them. So if you want people to think bad things about somebody else, that's giving them a bad reputation. And Luther said that's also a breaking of the Eighth Commandment. So even if it's true... You don't need to go dipper dobbing on people. See, here in Australia, we have the term dobbing or dipper dobbing. And that's when you go and you just tell on somebody just for the sake of getting them in trouble. Now, if somebody's doing something naughty and they're hurting you, yes, go to your mummy or your daddy or your teacher and tell them such and such is hurting me or such and such is doing something naughty, you need to stop them. But if it's not affecting you and you're not hurting anyone and you're just telling on them because you want them to get in trouble, then that's dibber dobbing and that's also a breaking of the Eighth Commandment. So you don't want to be a dobber. So don't be a dobber and don't be a liar. That's what the Eighth Commandment tells you not to do. Now Heinrich, we're going to do these two commandments together. What is the Ninth Commandment? You shall not cover your neighbour's hair. 
And what's the tenth commandment? The really big one. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife for a means of an amazement. His title was don't kill anything else that be don't do him. Yeah, so, so Heinrich, you know what coveting is? Wanting something. Yeah, so coveting is when you want something that isn't yours. So in the Bible, the word covet is also the same word for the word desire. It's the word to want something. Like if you want a piece of cake, or if you want a, or you want a present, or you want to go play. It's the same word. But coveting is when you're coveting something that you shouldn't be wanting. When you want something that belongs to somebody else and it isn't yours. So like, if your brother has a toy, and it's not your toy, and you want to have it, and you insist that I want it, I need it. Or when there's some chocolate in the fridge and mommy and daddy said you can't have that and you keep going I want it I want it that's coveting and so coveting is when it's not stealing you haven't stolen it but you keep thinking about wanting to steal it when you keep thinking about wanting to take it that's what coveting is it's you haven't actually stolen the thing but you're thinking about stealing it you're wanting to steal it. so this is when the sin is still in your head because children, sin isn't just naughty things that you do. Sins can also be naughty thoughts in your head when you're thinking about doing something naughty. And that's why God gave us the ninth and the tenth commandment about coveting. So that God reminded us that not just the things that we do are naughty, but even our thoughts in our head can be naughty. When we're thinking about doing naughty things, when we're wanting to do naughty things, that's a breaking of the ninth and the tenth commandment. And so, children, that is the Ten Commandments. So, thank you, Acolyte Heinrich, for helping out on this video. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye, and God bless.